Hi, Lisa enthusiasts, and welcome to my 50th attempt to give a pre-recorded talk. I really, really wish this would be the good one. Mm, today, I'm going to tell you about my very favorite astrophysical objects, which are supermassive black hole binaries. Well, supermassive black hole binaries can form in an aftermath of a galaxy merger. And if they shrink enough, they can enter the gravitational wave emission stage and enter the LISA band. Uh, this is why we really care for those. Uh, but what is their path to coalescence? So first of all, they experience a sort of gravitational drag against the surrounding environment, which is called dynamical friction. And when they form a bound bi binary at roughly a parsec separation, they enter the slingshot em ejection phase where they interact with stars, uh, kicking them out of the galaxy, and they shrink in the interaction until they reach the gravitational wave stage. Actually, the whole picture is much more complex than this, but let's keep it simple at least for now. What I want to focus today on today is the dynamical friction phase because uh, this has been thought to be pretty easy to model for very long but in fact what I will show you uh, shortly is that the theoretical framework even if it works pretty well if we think about a spherical and smooth galaxy when we think about more realistic galaxies with all kind of morphologies and especially at the weird morphologies that we find at pretty high redshift uh, then the dynamical friction phase might not be adequate. And this is particularly important because Lisa is going to detect binaries merging even at very high redshift with pretty large signal to noise. So in order to investigate this aspect, what we did is we took a zoom-in cosmological simulation run by David Fiacone in 2017, and we took the main galaxy in the simulation. This is a pretty standard galaxy, it's a main sequence galaxy with a, a thick and turbulent disk with a lot of gas in it. And uh, what we did is to put black holes in there and uh, we tried to understand how long it would take for them to reach the center and how they would reach the center. So what uh, we have here is that we put the primary in the densest region near the center, and we put actually six secondary black holes in a circular orbit uh, uh, in the disk plane. And this is a strategy that allowed us uh, to run multiple simulation in simulations in one. Uh, and the idea is uh, just that we check the secondaries not to scatter each other, so that we can think of all of them to evolve basically in an independent way. I forgot to mention that each black hole here is a million solar masses. Okay, so in here I'm going to show you the gas, the, sorry, the star's density profile and the gas density profile seen face on and edge on. And the top, on the top of it, you will see the orbits of the black holes evolving. And initially they start on a pretty circular orbit and also pretty much on the disk plane, you see. Uh, but uh, quickly the orbit gets perturbed and they get off the disk plane, they also get more eccentric. And I want really you to focus on the fact that uh, also the galaxy is developing structures like sort of spirals. Soon you'll see developing a, a strong bar with the associated spirals around. Uh, and also in the meantime, the black holes uh, are reaching the center one by one. Okay, here we have the bar. We also have some galaxy flybys that help in perturbing the morphology. But look here, one black hole basically got ejected from the system instead of spiraling in. So here, what I am showing you is uh, the distance of each of the black holes from the primary as a function of time. I just want to mention that uh, the black hole uh, that is marked with the blue line had to be removed uh, from the simulation because of a spurious scattering. The very strong message we were surprised about here is that the black holes that started basically from the initial uh, separation just with a different uh, phase can take a very different time scale to complete the spiral. And the most surprising one is uh, black hole number six, which basically got ejected from the system while the other black holes uh, starting from the same initial configuration basically took uh, roughly a hundred million years to reach the center. So not long, but well, 
what we ask now is what's the reason for it? What drives uh, sto this uh, stochasticity? Maybe our dynamical friction treatment that uh, would predict our black holes more or less to in spiral on the same time scale to the center doesn't really work. So what uh, we did here is to compute uh, the torque that uh, w we expect to be associated to dynamical friction uh, as a function of time for each of these black holes. And we use the standard formulas for dynamical friction from Ostriker and Chandrasekhar. And here you see the results. And for comparison, we also computed the global torque uh, that uh, is due to all that is present in the simulation, all the gravitational torque, including also the dynamical friction one. But you will see that this global torque is much, much larger than the dynamical friction torque, meaning that these global torques are the ones that really determine the spiral and really change the angular momentum of each black hole here. And uh, the really striking thing is that at the moment, a strong bar forms roughly at time 850 million years. Then uh, you see these uh, uh, global torques uh, shooting up, meaning that the bar has a crucial impact in the evolution of our secondary massive black holes. Okay, so let's do something that is uh, really typical for a physicist. Let's work out some time scales. So what I'm showing you here is a comparison between uh, the time scale we uh, would expect dynamical friction to bring each of these black holes to the center to the actual time they took to reach uh, the center. And uh, you can see a huge difference here. And uh, in particular, all black holes took way less to reach the primary, at least to the smallest distance we can resolve compared to what we would have uh, predicted, which this remarkable exception of the black hole that got kicked out. And uh, another time scale we wanted to figure out is the time uh, those black holes would uh, take to undergo the subsequent phases like the stellar hardening phase and also the final coalescence. And uh, we worked those time scales out for different uh, assumptions for the eccentricity and also for the density profile. Uh, and basically, if we neglected the most pessimistic assumption we made, the whole process uh, can be thought as uh, taking only a few hundred million years. Okay, so I'm at the end of my talk and uh, I really, really hope I managed to convince you that dynamical friction might not be the adequate description for the large scales in spiral of massive black holes, especially if we think if, at uh, non-idealized morphologies, at uh, galaxies in a cosmological context, and especially at the high redshift universe. And also, uh, I, I want you to remember that this process can be very, very stochastic and it's not easy to predict. So we have a lot of work to do to expand these results better. Uh, but I really hope uh, you followed me so far. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure you check the, the um, paper on the archive if you want more details and also Please ask uh, questions, make comments, all of those are really very welcome and thank you very much. <laughs>